Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. For some of us, we understand what's happening in the world. Like, I get it. I know what's happening right now in this world. It's not, uh, it's not really a shock. When, when, you're, when you and, and the Father, when you and Jesus are walking circumspectly, when you're walking daily with the Father, you will know that, that these, these times, they, they weren't a shock. God, God constantly has revealed it in His Word, the things that would take place on this earth. Um, I want to remind you that the world is swayed by the evil one, is what the Bible says. There's, there's, this, this world doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't even belong to us. Uh, you, you, you and I can be so comfortable that we become numb to what's happening in the world and the world will put you to sleep. It'll just, for example, this is a story I heard a, a while back. This is years. Hopefully I don't jack it up, but I'll say it the best I can. The perfect picture of what church can be like or Christians can be like is this you know there was these uh, this family and uh, they wanted to go to Disneyland so bad because their little girl is you know four years old and man she wants to be in Disneyland and so they go to the happiest place on earth Disneyland and uh, they've been saving up money and they're like man we're finally going to do this and they, they get into the park and, and the little girl walks in and she's just like just in shock of like wow and just sees all the activity taking place and she just can't believe believe it she's has this amazement of like man does this really exist and she's walking everywhere and and now they're 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 walking the park for hours and they decide to go have lunch together they're sitting at a table and guess who shows up mickey and mickey shows up and mickey is like hi there you know does the whole thing and the little, the little girl's like, oh, it's Mickey. And she just like, just, she's out of control. She's like, oh my God, you know, four years old. And then, and then Donald Duck shows up and then Goofy. And, and then all these different characters in the happiest place on earth, Disneyland. Man, she's just like, wow. Well, they finish eating and they're taking pictures. And they're like, she's, she's just, she's taking it all in. And then they start walking, and, and as they're walking, they're, they're going to one of the rides. Uh, uh, you pick the ride you want. I don't care. You, you kind of fill in the blanks in the story. And, and so as they're walking there, the parents got distracted because they're like looking at the map, and they're like, uh, I wonder if we should go this way or that way. And, and all of a sudden, this little four-year-old girl, she, she, gets, she gets drawn by something that gets her attention. And then she starts going to the the very thing that's drawing her attention and she's just like so mesmerized and she's just there just looking and and she's excited she's so happy that she doesn't even know that she's lost and she's just enjoying it and loving it the parents were also so happy and so excited that they're just looking at the map of like all of the world of Disneyland, of all the places they're going to take their little girl. And all of a sudden, dad looks around and he notices he can't, he can't find his daughter. And he's like freaking out and he's frantic and he's like running everywhere. I don't know about you, I'm a dad. My daughter's 22 years old, but I would still freak out if I lost her at Disneyland. That's, that's the kind of dad I am. I freak out. But just imagine a four-year-old little girl, and the little girl is just getting, she's going deeper and deeper and deeper, and, and she's having the time of her life. She didn't even care where mom and dad is. She's in Disneyland. And the parents are frantic, looking, running. They can't find her. Well, after a while, Disneyland, to this four-year-old little girl, was starting to wear off. She started realizing okay i see mickey i see donald i see goofy i see these things but eventually she starts realizing that but, but 
but where's my mom? Where, where's my dad? And, and now what felt like it was amazing is now becoming something so fearful because this little girl is thinking like, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. And what, what's the moral of the story? What happens to people is that we can get so lost in this world and mesmerized by all the things that the world has to offer. And you can be living your life even as a good Christian, but also be caught up with the affairs of this life. And you can become so numb to the fact that you're lost that one day you'll wake up like what we're seeing today and then you'll realize that, man, this whole time I have let everything we're seeing become the new normal who said that this is okay for this to be the new normal you see until it hits you you don't wake up tonight we have three uh, beautiful people with us tonight that were at the las vegas concert with us here tonight that is a very traumatic thing what is happening to people they're so sucked in that they don't even know they're lost. As a Christian, you can be so sucked in and not even know that you're lost. These are sobering days. But God, but, but check this out, but God's not mad at you. God, God's not hating on you. God's not saying, well, I taught you a lesson. Let's see what you do now. God, that's not God. God doesn't condemn you. God doesn't, he doesn't put a guilt trip on you. He doesn't, he doesn't start putting the, the, the smack down on you. He doesn't start whacking you. He doesn't do that. God, God didn't take life. What we saw take place in Las Vegas, God didn't do that. You know, and, and listen, um, if, if you are someone that has heard Christians say, well, you know what? It's because they were all sinners and they all deserve to die. Don't listen to that stupidity. Yes, we know there's sin in this world. We know that there's destruction. We know that this earth, Jesus made it very clear that this world is Satan's. It's Satan's. But guess what? <laughs> I, I ask myself, why would God give Satan this world? You know why? Because God knows that this world is not forever. The world that he has for you and I is so much greater than this. God doesn't want to give you leftovers. God wants to give you his very best. That's why he says that you are just passing bys. Your citizenship is in heaven. That's, that's your ultimate home. And I know that these times, and I know this is happening to a lot of Christians, where you're questioning whether or not you're saved. Whether or not you're going to heaven. I know this is happening. Why? Because it's a wake-up call. It's a rude awakening. But check this out. I want to read you a verse because we're going to pray for these three people that were there at the concert. And, and listen, I know that sometimes one can ask, how is it that, that this group of people died and that group of people died? What, what, how is that God? Let me tell you something. Sometimes you can't explain things that happen. Some of you, you should be dead, but you're alive. By the grace of God, I had severe cancer. By God's grace, I'm alive. But check this out. But the question is, what are you going to do with that life that you have now? You had you had the first half. Now you got your second half. Now what? And so I, I want us to really just in just like lean forward, lean into God. Don't don't get so comfortable and 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 just begin to feel like you know what uh, it, well it didn't happen to me so praise God I'm okay no listen it, when one hurts we all hurt I am hurting for Vegas right now my, I have a good pastor friend of mine who has a, a church in Las Vegas and, and man people are hurting this is real but this is, this is, this is wake up time this is, this is, okay, come on. This is time to, to shake off the numbness, and this is time to, to be the church that's rising. You know what? This world isn't fair. Have you noticed? It's not fair. This world is so unfair. But you know what? This Sunday, I'm going to be talking about this. You know what? Though the world is unfair, but we have an unfair advantage when you have Jesus. Oh, yeah. 
I'll, I'll agree with people that say, this world's not, it's, un, it's so unfair. You're right, it is. God never said it would be fair. He never said that. So look at this scripture real quickly. In John 14, verse 25 through 27, I'm going to read this, and you guys can look on the screen, open your Bibles. I would save it because there are people right now that you know that they need help, and you have to be able to help. Be, you have to be able to know how to respond to them and just share scriptures. So what I share with you tonight, you can now share with people that you love and know, okay? You ready? John 14, 25 through 27, it says this. It says, I have spoken all these things. This is Jesus speaking in the red, okay? He was speaking to his disciples. He said, I have spoken all these things while I am still with you. So he's making it very clear. Hey, listen, guys, there's something we need to, we need to deal with some, with some heart issues here. While I'm still with you, I'm going to be straight, straight up with you. I'm going to keep it real. And he says, but the Father will send the friend. Everybody say the friend. And this is what Ignite is all about. The Father's going to send the friend in my name to help you. The friend is the? This is why we do Ignite because you know what? The Holy Spirit is the only one that can resurrect you out of any trauma. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can bring you back from death to life. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can take you out of your tomb of death and roll the stone to the side and bring you out back with life. That's why Jesus said, hey, listen, man, the Father made sure that we leave you someone. We leave you the helper, the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say, he, ever say he. Look at this. He will teach you all things. He will remind you of everything I have said to you. Do you see why the Holy Spirit is so important? Because once you read your Bible, there's only so much you can do. But when you're going through something, when the struggle is on, when the challenge is on, guess what? The Holy Spirit begins to teach you and tell you exactly what you need to do or what you need to read or what you need to stand on. The Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you. Look. He says... I love this. And look where he, he, he ties this verse of the Holy Spirit right into the next one. Because you're, you're having to ask yourself, how are we going to live in these times? Jesus not only tells you that you have a helper, the Holy Spirit, but then he tells you how you're going to be able to live in these days. He gives you the answer. Check this out. Right, the very next verse he says, he will teach you all things he will remind you of everything I have said. I leave my what? Peace with you. He, the Holy Spirit is our peace. Look, keep reading. So he leaves, he says, I leave my peace with you. He was talking about who? The Holy Spirit. Then he says, I leave my peace with you. Then who's my peace? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is known as the comforter. The Holy Spirit comforts those who are mourning, who are hurting He's the comforter. As a matter of fact, tonight I'm praying as I was driving. I'm like, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would, would comfort the church tonight because just think like your bed. Some of you, you may have a comforter at home. If you don't have one, go buy one. It's awesome. It's, it's the most, so, it just feels so good when you lay down in your bed with your comfort. It's just like, ah, that's what the Holy Spirit's like. He's the comforter. Okay, and uh, it goes on to say, and I give you my peace. I give my peace to you. I do not give it to you as the what? world does see you can try to go get your peace somewhere in this world go try to get your answer guess what it's temporary that's 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 the world has their own kind of peace you can you can you can buy the most incredible bed you could buy the most expensive bed and not sleep man you can sleep on a cement floor and god will give you peace on that floor and sweet sleep with it too. Trust me, I was just in Oaxaca. We were, it hurt, but I slept good. Praise God. And so he says, do not let your hearts be what? So, so who's responsible, first of all, to not let it happen? Who's responsible for that? You and who? And your friend. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will give you the strength to not let your heart be troubled. And do not be what? Afraid. And there's so much fear right now happening. 
people are troubled. I'm troubled because you know what? Uh, one of the people that was there was Danette. Danette was at the concert. She called me on the phone when the whole thing was going down. That ticked me off. It troubled me. You know, Danette is a phenomenal, faithful volunteer here. She greets you guys every weekend, Sunday, smiling, always going above and beyond. Well, let me tell you something. That, that hit home. That hit elevate. And by God's grace, Danette and her sister, they lived through that horrible, horrible, evil, 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 dark, demonic experience of what took place in Las Vegas. It was dark. It's wicked. It's evil. It's, 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 it's an attack. It's, it's literally a hit from Satan. Yes, that man who was delusional and whatever he's dealing with mentally. I don't, nobody knows, but let me tell you something. You have to go deeper. There's an enemy, an adversary. Jesus made it very clear. You have an adversary. You have a hater. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. How many more times do we have to read that verse until we finally allow it to sink in and realize, dang, I got a hater. And he's just looking, he's looking to kill me. He's looking to take me out. But you know what? Jesus would never reveal that Satan is a hater, a, 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 a demon who steals from you, kills you, and destroys you. You know what? Jesus would never give him that kind of glory by expressing or describing or defining what Satan does. The very next verse, you know what uh, Jesus says in John 10, 10? He says, but chill. You know when someone says, but like someone says, hey, wow, that's such a nice shirt, but you can just erase everything they said about your nice shirt. You know they're going to talk crap now. Right? So Jesus says, hey, you know, he comes to steal, kill, destroy, but, so he immediately just says, hey, you know what, don't even trip on that he says but i have come to give you life and i have come to give you life abundantly abundantly yeah pastor but now we live in days that are uncertain guess what man the day you were born it was uncertain it, it's it's uncertain but but you can be certain with jesus you can be certain that no matter what, I trust God that on this earth, I'm going to live a long life. And when I die, I'm going to heaven. Nobody wants to go to heaven right now. Most Christians don't. You ask them, do you want to go to heaven? Not right now. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Not right now. I'm okay. That's not the real question. The real question is, but do you want to go to heaven? Like, do you anticipate the day that you and I, we get to be with the Father face to face or have, has that not become your reality yet that one day we will expire? The Bible says that no one's promised tomorrow. When I got sick, I was here today and the next day dying in a hospital bed. These wonderful people, they were happy enjoying a concert and then Hours later, boom. And so Jesus says, hey, listen, the world you live in is, is filled with trouble, hardship, problems, pain, suffering. He's saying that the world is troubled on every side. Come on, have you ever felt like, man, you're being attacked on every side personally? Okay, that's what Jesus, he's like on every side. He says that there's unrest instead of peace in this earth, right? What, what are we all trying to look for? We, we just want peace. I talk to people like, man, what do you want? I just want to be able to sleep. You know what? Unrest has become the new normal for people. And Jesus is coming to us saying, hey, listen, I want to give you a peace that looks nothing like this world. Nothing. The peace I want to give you, man, it is a peace that's supernatural, that you can be in the midst of a storm. And let me tell you something, and your spirit, your spirit man can be calm. Huh? In the midst of a storm. Kind of like when, when the disciples were on the boat and, and the big storm hit. You guys remember that part of the story? And then what was Jesus doing? Man, that brother was sleeping. And they're screaming put it this way the storm never woke up your savior guys 
the storm never woke up your savior your storm never woke up your savior you know who woke him up peter don't you care about us we're dying man don't you care and jesus like just trying to check up all the, like, the stuff off his eyes and his nyangañas or whatever they're called and, and 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 the bible says that he slept on a what pillow and so jesus i'm sure he didn't just get up and get off for god but he just probably just you know got his pillow put it away and then he got up and you know what he said to the storm peace be still what is jesus saying he's saying that in the midst of a storm you can be assured that you can be calm in spirit you see god and i need you guys to hear this especially god needs to calm the storm within first before he can calm the storm without it starts inside Danette, he has to calm the storm internally so don't get caught up on the external it, it's gonna it's gonna start right inside internally because that's where peace comes from peace isn't something that flies in the air no peace is your jesus your savior peace is inside of you he's already saying peace be still peace be still and you you and my job you know what our job is our job is to have faith that peace lives in me that's your job peace lives in me say it with me peace lives in me no but but do you believe that peace lives in me say it everybody peace lives in me he lives in you and trust me i've been through some pretty gnarly things in life and let me tell you something i have experienced the peace of god that surpasses all understanding stop trying to understand everything because when you're trying to understand everything you lose peace you can't you can't try to that's why god says lean not on your own understanding lean not on your understanding but he says but acknowledge me and i will give you peace so right now don't acknowledge the fact that you're allowing these 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 thoughts these ideas for and you know what some of you maybe you're being hit right now you can't acknowledge that you can't yeah i'm not saying don't deny it because you can't deny what took place but you can't keep acknowledging it and acknowledging you'll lose peace I need to lean in in God and say, God, I don't understand. I don't need to understand, but I do need your peace. Are you hearing me tonight? People need peace around you. You may be good right now. Maybe, maybe life is good. Hey, man, I got no storms. I'm good, Pastor. That's probably for someone sitting in here. No, guess what? You are to carry peace with you everywhere you go. You are a peace giver you go everywhere you go you bring peace you gotta you gotta bring peace to people they they're looking for for peace people are afraid right now but we got to get the revelation first guys we got to get the revelation of this peace that surpasses all understanding and we need to get god you know what some we need to get some god revelation and then we need we need to get out there we need to start bringing peace listen that's the unfair advantage to our advantage now man we gotta we gotta show up the church needs to rise the church needs to come and bring the 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 Lord and 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 peace and 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 bring some some revelation that you got because you you have a relationship. Maybe maybe I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna throw this out there. Maybe you're like that four year old little girl who's been in Disneyland for a while, and you don't even know that you're lost. Well, guess what? The Father's saying, "Come back then." Let's come back to the Father tonight. Let's come back to the Father. Can I give you another verse? And listen, I have to stop and do this. this. This is necessary. Because you know what? You have to ask yourself, well, how do we get through this? How do we get through this? How do we get through this? How are we going to get through this? I'll tell you how we're going to get through this, Danette. We're going to get through this together. How do we get through this? Together. The person sitting next to you needs you. We all need each other together. The church needs to come together. We need to come together and we need to be like hashtag elevate strong. 
How are you guys going to get through this? Together. That's how we're going to get through this. You're not going to get through this alone. You can't get through this alone. We got to do it together. Why? Because uh, we is better than me. Together. We're going to do this together. And I love this verse. Look at this. Psalms 34, 18 through 20 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Look at that. Man, if you're crushed, you're just like, ah, God can save you. He saves. And he says, the righteous person may have many troubles. See, he never said that my peace, he didn't say that once you get my peace, you won't have a struggle. He didn't say once you get my peace, you won't have a hardship. He didn't say once you have my peace, you'll never experience any pain. No, he said, hey, listen, in the midst of all that, I'll save you. Though you're righteous and you have many troubles, I'm going to take care of you. But the Lord delivers him from them what? Not some, not a few. He says, man, I will deliver you from every single trouble, all. And he protects all his bones. Danette, your bones have been protected. Your bones have been protected. He protects all your bones. Not one of them will be broken. What I'm saying tonight is this, is we have to wake up. And is this world going to get better? No, it's not. It's not. But it's going to get brighter. You know why? Because you're going to wake up and your light's going to shine. And people that are hopeless are going to be able to see your light. And those that have been lost are going to find hope. And then once we start seeing salvation, once we start seeing hope, and then like the Bible says, if my people would humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. We need to humble ourselves. We need to come back to the Father. Maybe if you've been in Disneyland, you know what? The spiritual lost Disneyland, let's come back to the Father tonight. Let's just repent tonight. Let's just say, God, I don't want to be lost anymore. I want, I, I, I'm realizing I'm lost. I, I'm numb. I, I've been numb. Like, I don't feel. I'm watching what happened in Las Vegas, and it's like, oh. And then the next day, man, you're just, like, moving on. But there are people around us that are afraid. And the, your job as a believer, man, I'm a peace. Uh, you know, last uh, two weeks ago, I said, you're a hope dealer. Well, guess what? You're a peace dealer, too. Man, I bring peace. Why? Jesus said, peace be still, storm stop. Do you know that's the authority? And I know that Pastor Tim's going to teach on that tonight in a little bit, but I, can, I have to address this. But right now, I want to pray for these amazing people. And I just keep Tiana. Yes, I got it. Tiana and then Robert. Uh, would you guys please come here for a second? Danette, please come here. So these precious people uh, were all at the concert. By the way, Danette, meet Robert and Tiana. You guys were there at the same place. And uh, the grace of God was upon these guys. In the midst of sadness and pain, can we give God a big hand clap of praise just to thank God for these lives? <laughs> Seriously. By the grace of God. And, and I want you guys to know something, and, and I'm sorry that uh, I know it gets uncomfortable, and right now it's not about uncomfortable, it's about together. And, and I need us to pray, church. Like, like, I need you to see Tiana as if she's your sister. Danette, she's your sister. Robert, he's your brother. And your sisters and your brother were in a really bad place. And they need, they need, they need the church. You know why? It's traumatic what they experience. It's okay to say, I've been traumatized. Don't be the Christian that thinks that you don't have enough faith because you're traumatized. It's okay to say, I'm traumatized. It's okay. Don't trip. It's okay. You're not Superman. You're not, you're not Wonder Woman. It's okay. I'm, I've, I've gone through some pain. But God, God's going to help me through this. And, uh, and we're going to help them through this. Through the, there's going to have to be a process of healing. But right now, I want us to church. I want us to 
to, to stand all to our feet. And I want us to pray. And if I can just get um, uh, Pastor Tim, Sandra, my elders, pastors, and uh, Maria come up here. We're just going to lay hands and pray for this, these people here. And, uh, and church, I want you to pray as if seriously. See, this is where we wake up. That's my, those are my sisters. That's, those are my sisters. And, and that's, that's my brother. Literally, God calls us brothers and sisters, right? Man, that's my brother. That's my sister. And we're going to pray that the Spirit of God just begins to fall upon them and that there, there would begin a supernatural healing in their minds, in their hearts. And so, Father, we, we pray in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, these, these wonderful people, your, your children, Father, were, were in a place that was just so devastating and so dark with all the things that took place and and so many lives were lost father and 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 lord just the trauma of seeing people uh bleeding to death and and just all the different things and the chaos and the fear and 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 lord i i just pray that you would supernaturally that you would erase in the name of jesus the very memory of that trauma in the name of lord we're praying for a supernatural work god we know that we believe in a process we believe that 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 we all need help but father i am praying in the name of Jesus that tonight that that these families because I know they have not been able to sleep God and so we're praying sweet sleep come on church you need to pray you guys got to pray with everything please father we're not here to be spectators we're praying father what if it was us God give us a new heart give us a new heart to feel and to care and to love and to go above and beyond even even if we have to sacrifice God and so Lord we thank you for Robert's life. God, I thank you that, that in the next weeks, Father, that Robert would begin to discover, Father, the purpose and the plan for his life on this earth. Lord, that he would begin to see that though uh, he, was, he was spared, though his life was spared, though, though it was a miracu miraculous thing for him to be alive and saved, Father, I, I pray that, that he would find uh, his intentional purpose of why he was placed on this earth, God. I pray that for Tiana, Father, Lord, even as they have been engaged, God, I thank you that this will not affect their engagement. I thank you as a matter of fact, God, we're praying that they're going to get stronger. Father, I thank you there's going to be even more refreshing. Father, I thank you that their love is going to expand, Father, even more. I thank you, Father God, that, that through this storm, God, I thank you that they're going to have a ministry of peace and they will bring peace everywhere they go, Father. I thank you even in their careers, God. I know that Tiana's a nurse, Father. I thank you that compassion passion is even growing even now in the name of Jesus that when she works with patience Father God she would begin to have compassion that is beyond this earth it's supernatural and Lord I pray Father for that as well for Robert Father as he does what he does even as he has served our country in the military God I thank you Father that he will now be a rescuer of souls Father God he will be rescuer of lives bringing people into your kingdom people that will get to know you as Lord and Savior and Lord I thank you for Danette's life I thank you for the anointing that you have placed upon her life Lord I thank you for saving her over and over and over again God I thank you that your plan and purpose is greater than what she's experienced so Lord help her to see Father God that you have a plan let this be Father God the very moment where she begins to uh, uh, discover but that you also begin to unfold the things that you will do with her life Father I thank you that Lord she's already stepping into her season I thank you that one chapter is closing and a new chapter is opening for all these people father so lord we just pray peace be still let's all say that come on everybody peace be still come on keep saying that peace be still just keep saying that peace be still put your hand over your heart and say peace be still maybe you need the peace of god right now you just begin to pray peace be still peace be still in the name of Jesus, peace be still. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to put a hand on the shoulders that are next to you. Because how will we get through this together? Come on, put your hand on the shoulder next to you. And look at them. Look, look both ways. 
and just say, I need you. And I want you to mean that, guys. I need you. We need each other. We, we need each other. You, you, we got we to gotta wake up. We need, we need each other. This is an unfair advantage. The church now is going to have more light. The church is going to have more wisdom, more revelation, more insight. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is going to confirm signs, wonders, and miracles through your life. And you will show up no longer just with word. You're going to show up with power. And you're going to be able to bring peace. And you're going to be able to bring a word in season for someone who needs it. Listen, no more of this wishy-washy Christianity. No, 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 no. No, we're going to be we're going to be firm in the faith, man. We're going to call those things that be not as though they were in Jesus name. You're going to begin to speak over your family. You know what some of you you quit ministering to some of your family members that have not come to Jesus. You know what? Tonight you pray God, awaken me again. Forgive me for getting tired of sharing my faith with, you know, Uncle Drink a lot and sister, you know, whatever tell it all and you just say God give me a love and a compassion for lost people awaken me come on put your put your hands on your belly and just say Holy Spirit lead me guide me direct me awaken me Holy Spirit resurrect me again to have life the life of Jesus and to be a life giver in the name of Jesus come on you just begin to pray God awaken me awaken me and you know what for some of you that you're already awakened you know what guess what there's more with God there's so much more with God what you're doing is great but guess what there's greater there's good and then there's gooder there's awesome and then there's awesomeness there's always more with God God wants to do more with your life if you're already a soul winner guess what God wants to take you to more levels higher levels but we don't stop growing we keep growing we keep advancing we keep increasing in the anointing that God has placed inside of us so that we can heal people so that we can deliver people we're literally this is the season where you got to pull people out of the fire and literally bring them out into the marvelous light and allow Jesus to begin to touch them, heal them. I'll tell you what. Danette was hiding under a bench and a police officer found her under that bench. And mind you, she has her wheelchair and every, where was she going to go? But a brave police officer went there, picked her up, and started running with her. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of the four friends in the Bible who picked up their friend. And they ran to the house where Jesus was. But there was obstacles. It said there was too many people and the house was filled. But you know what those friends did? They sacrificed. They said, we're not going to give up. Heck to the no, we're not going to give up. You know what we're going to do? Man, we're going to get up on that roof and we're going to break this dude's roof and we're going in. And they went above and beyond. When was the last time that you went extreme? You went above and you went the extra mile for someone who is broken, hurting, lost. Someone who's just ugly with you. Who just tells you, man, I don't give her, I don't need your help. And you're just like, no, dude, I'm picking you up and I'm taking you to salvation. I'm taking you to healing. I'm taking you to a place where God is going to restore your life. That's what that cop did for Danette. We need to be people that pick up people. Pick up people, man. There are hurting and dying people right now. Maybe not like what we saw in Vegas. But there are people that are hurting right now in your workplace. Pick them up. Pick them up with an encouraging word. Pick them up with, with a little extra help. You know what I did today? I've been going different places. Everywhere I went, I bought people something. I bought them either a gift card, uh, coffee, food. Every, everywhere I went today, I paid for everybody. You know why? I'm like, you know what? Maybe this will pick them up today. And each one would just look at me like, oh, my God. One of them was a lady who was pregnant. I bought her a $25 gift. This isn't to brag. I'm just telling you. Her eyes welled up with water. I wonder what she's going through. And, and just to think about her baby who was about to be born in 30 days. And, and, and I said, this isn't for you, okay? I'm like, that's for that baby in there. You know, that, 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 don't get it wrong, girl. It ain't for you. 
but she just cried and I said and you know what I told I just said this I said I said you know what God sent me today to remind you and to let you know that your baby will never lack for anything right and you know what she did just cried and the boss they're not supposed to there she's like no you can't give gifts I'm like okay I'll meet you outside girl you know but we're gonna work you, you ain't you're not gonna deny me this thing right we're gonna and I, I met with the general manager I'm like please I'm like uh, I'm sorry I'll never do it again you know she's like well you can't do it in the store I'm like okay fine we'll do it outside and she's like whatever I'm like okay great I'm like you need a break let's go <laughs> maybe that's all she needed she needed to know that God was going to provide for her baby girl do you know that you're just you, you're just one act of kindness away from bringing someone into the kingdom you don't have to be all annoying I, you don't have to be Pastor Mauricio you be the best Jesus that you can be. And you and me and all of us, we all look different in how we're going to do that. Come on, man. Be a life giver. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.